I grew up in Newfoundland under the burden of a tidal wave of misinformation that could have left me scarred for life and ready to be shipped off to Dr. Phil in an oilskin restrainer. I was from Mesentia Bay, the fog factory of the entire universe. I never knew what the sun looked like till I took a trip to Gander when I was about 15 and even then thought it was a trick from the Americans. But after romping around Pazentia in short pants and the latest hip rubbers, it was an odd costume, we had to sing the ode to Newfoundland every single day in convent school. Well, the first line of it was a bristling lie when sun rays crown thy pine clad hills. Sun rays? Newfoundland? When? We never saw any, and nary a pine clad hill to save your life either. To speak confidently of the sun shining any time in Newfoundland is evidence of drunkenness or inescapable hallucination. But teachers explained this was an ode, a patriotic hymn, an anthem. And anthems, like eulogies for the recently departed, put a gloss on things. As a great man once said, you're not on oath in a farewell speech to the dead. Same for anthems. The matter having been thus explained, I flourished, as you see. And from that day on, thought of Newfoundland as one perpetually shrouded tropical Tahiti. Which brings me to today's complaints about our national anthem. Margaret Atwood and some others are trying to say that the phrase, all our sons command, excludes women. Bosh! You could just as easily say sons excludes fathers and mothers, aunts and uncles, first cousins and mothers-in-law. Sons refers more to generations than gender. Sons in the anthem was not a salute to young males. It was invoking the poetical use of the term around since the Bible and defined by the Oxford English Dictionary as a person regarded as the product of offspring of a certain country or place. Margaret Atwood knows this, but she's having a bit of mischief behind the mask on this stuff. New book out too. And throwing a prickly rose to the feminist, there's a pea under my mattress brigade may also be a rearguard action to distract from last week's testosterone tsunami, the David Gilmore saga. Sons in the anthem is a poeticism for all Canadians, for all citizens, all patriots. If we are looking for a real injury to our national pride, something that will revolt the heart of every Canadian, then note this, that some dumb cur with a jelly bean for a brain just Monday night painted over the new statue of Canadian hockey's holy family, the Gretzkys. They painted the statue of Gretzky and his family blue. Anthem schmantum. You want a real patriotic outrage to get behind? A blasphemy against hockey and its first and almost holy family. That's something to stand on guard against. For The National, I'm Rex Murphy. <laughs>